After many years of anticipation, KTM released this bike, the 390 Adventure Series in 2020. Now today, I'm gonna review the good, the bad, and maybe even the ugly of this particular model. Now, I'm giving you a little bit different perspective than maybe some of the other reviewers out there in YouTube. For one, I'm a fairly novice rider. And on top of that, I have put almost 2,000 miles on this bike down here in southern Baja, Mexico, all in the last five months. And normally, you can probably see behind me, I'm talking about four-wheel vehicles. Today, we're gonna talk about this baby. My name is Michael Ladin. I am currently traveling more than 220,000 miles around the world on board my 1994 Storton Stevenson Overland Expedition Rig and KTM Adventure Bike. This is my story. All right, let's hop right on board and review this 390 Adventure Bike. A couple points of interest that I'm gonna mention before I get going. One, you're gonna notice that this bike was not washed uh, for this review. Uh, the dust, the dirt, and everything else that you're gonna find here in Southern Baja is on board this bike. Uh, second, I think I mentioned that it's been 2,000 miles that I've ridden in the last five months. Well, 1,500 of that, plus or minus, has been done off pavement. Uh, dirt roads, back country, single track, rocks, and everything else. So I have a lot of experience on that, a little bit less on pavement. So that's kind of where my perspective is going to be coming from. Before we get going on the good, the bad, and even the ugly, let's go over the specifications for this bike from the factory. So this is the baby in the KTM Adventure Series. It has a single cylinder thumper double overhead cam engine with four valves, 373 cc's. It is liquid cooled with a Bosch electronic ignition. Its maximum power is just about 43 and a half horsepower. Like KTM's other adventure bikes, it has a steel trellis frame. Up front, it has a 43 millimeter W apex uh, front suspension with an inverted fork and about 6.7 inches of wheel travel. In the rear it has a W apex shock with adjustable rebound and adjustable spring preload with about a 7 inch wheel travel. Like most adventure bikes the seat height is at 33.6 inches so a little bit high. Ground clearance on this motorcycle 7.8 inches. Dry weight is about 348 pounds with a fuel capacity of 3.8 US gallons. It has a six-speed transmission and such features as traction control and Bosch ABS. And all of this priced at 6,200 US dollars. Also, let's quickly go over the modifications that I made to this machine that were not factory spec. I either got those from the dealer at uh, KTM when I purchased it, or some of the, uh, particularly the luggage I bought uh, after the fact. I opted for some additional protection from the factory, and that includes this skid plate underneath here, which is a KTM uh, power part, as is, uh, I don't know if you can see it right here, uh, the radiator protector, it's an aluminum piece that goes on here. So I added that. The crash bar on this uh, particular bike is uh, native to, uh, or stock in North America. If you're over in Europe or Australia, I believe that uh, this is an additional uh, upgrade on the bike. I also added, added this uh, headlight Touratech guard in the front of the bike. So I've got KTM um, branded uh, side saddle bags. These are what I would call um, semi-rigid. You can see they zipper open. My only complaint about them is uh, the zippers are a little bit tight. Maybe it's because I got so much dirt involved with uh, riding around. Uh, Moscow Moto, I have a uh, water bag here. 
I've got a companion bag on the other side here. Um, this big bag on the back is the Scout uh, D50 50 liter bag um, from Moscow Moto. And that's where I put most of my groceries. On the front here is a um, tank bag, also from Moscow Moto, and a cell phone case here, which is, comes in real handy. Um, especially when you're using your cell phone to, to possibly navigate or something else. Moscow Moto stuff, I will say, is top quality. Uh, have had no issues with any of the bags that I have on board. In fact, my riding gear is also, also Moscow Moto. And uh, what I will say uh, is that it is not cheap. <laughs> it's probably one of the more expensive brands out there, but you get what you pay for. This stuff is rugged as hell, and I've uh, been super, super happy with all the Moscow Moto stuff. Another upgrade was the Akrapovic Performance Exhaust System. All right, so I'm gonna go a little bit backwards here. Why don't we start with what I consider to be the ugly about this motorcycle. The biggest ugly is the motorcycle traction control. Every single time you turn the bike on, you have to go through a six step process to turn it off if you're gonna be going off pavement. And oh Lord, when I say this drives me insane, I mean totally insane. All right, that wasn't too bad. Let's talk about sort of the, the bad, or at least bad in, as it pertains to what I may be using this machine for, and you guys can make a judgment as to whether this is uh, a good or a bad feature on board this motorcycle. All right, the tires. I got them in the bad category, but in truth, they're not really bad. On the pavement, they're actually pretty good tires. It's just that what I'm doing, sand, off-road, they're really kind of street tires. So I'm gonna be looking for something that's a little more knobby, uh, that has definitely more grip, particularly in this deep beach sand. Probably the first and biggest upgrade that you can make on this particular bike is replace the foot pegs. They are cocked from the factory at, I don't know what it is, maybe it's 30% forward. Virtually impossible to stand up and uh, get yourself off-road on this, on this machine. So I upgraded them with uh, Black Dog Cycle Works. Uh, they're larger footprint, much grippier, and do yourself a service and do that. The first thing you do, replace the foot pegs. Let's talk about ground clearance for a minute. Remember, this bike was based on the 390 Duke, which is really a sort of a street performance motorcycle. The ground clearance is not enough. Um, however, having pounded it on some single track stuff where it was, was quite rocky, I will tell you that, yeah, I hit the skid guard and you definitely, definitely got to put an upgraded skid guard on uh, this motorcycle if you have any hopes of, of not damaging the other side. But what I will tell you, unless you are really, really, really into, you know, heavy jumping and, and really some hardcore trails, the ground clearance I found to be sufficient. And why? Like, who puts bulbs in anything nowadays, right? I mean, I think they may have upgraded for the 2022 model and put LED in, but you know, I don't, I don't understand that. The one thing I have noticed, um, and I don't know whether it's something that I gotta get checked out at KTM, is when you start the bike when it's cold, it, it, it consistently probably stalls one, maybe two times, and I'm, I'm, I'm not sure about this, but I suspect it has something to do with the clutch lever not completely disengaging, but that's, that's my theory. I'm gonna get that checked out uh, when I get to the dealership at KTM. All right, now let's get to the fun part. Let's talk about what is great about this machine. I love the fact that this bike looks like it's Big Brothers, the 790, the 1290. The TFT to screen right here is fantastic. Uh, a lot of holdover from the other uh, bikes in this KTM series. Uh, it's just so fun to ride. I, I keep going back to that, but that's really what impresses me the most about this. Obviously the weight, the fact that it, it was inexpensive, 
It bases around 6,200 US dollars. Um, all of these things contribute to this bike being really one of the best values for your money. Having modern traction control, ABS braking, and the fuel range of being 250 plus miles all make this thing a great bike to ride. There's been chatter about the seat height and uh, I am about 5'9", 30 inch inseam. You can see with my motorcycle boots on, uh, I wouldn't call it tippy towing, but it's you know slightly <laughs> less than tippy towing. Uh, I can reasonably keep the bike with both feet on the ground uh, upright, but uh, the seat is a little bit high. I, if I scrunch more towards the front here, um, you know, it gets a little bit lower. And uh, as other people have said, it's a pretty, it's a pretty hard seat. So it, I wouldn't recommend it necessarily for long, uh, you know, trips uh, in the saddle. The only service that I've done on this bike was the uh, original 600 mile, 1000 kilometer uh, initial service, which is all fluids and filters and everything else. And I have maintained uh, the lubrication on the chain. But other than that, in the first 2000 miles, I have not had any issues uh, whatsoever. We did have to tighten the chain slightly at the uh, 600 mile service. For a thumper, I get no vibration. Uh, even on road and I will admit down here in Mexico my probably top speed that I've ever hit is Maybe about 70 miles an hour. I think this thing will go a lot faster and it certainly has the power in the pickup But uh, with the narrow roads cows sheep goats and everything else wandering around That's as fast as I probably would ever go down here I'm finding I have about a 250 mile range on a full tank of fuel uh, on this bike and you got to remember I'm also pretty much off-road most of the time So I, I think if you were on the uh, pavement on a highway you might get better than that The one thing I'm going to say about the tires and the wheels and I know that uh, you know many in the hardcore sort of Enduro motorcycle uh, camp are going to say that without uh, you know spoked wheels that this is not a real true off-road machine I will tell you um, I ride pretty hard and uh, although I'm not jumping and I'm not doing crazy and I'm not an expert by any stretch of the imagination what I do like about these is that it is tubeless so I can easily repair them uh, with a uh, you know a plug kit so so far I'm sticking with the uh, cast wheels uh, doing okay and I can say after you know 1500 miles off-road I don't have any um, dents or or chips or anything else in them. So, so far so good crossing my fingers. Future plans for this bike? Well, definitely new mirrors. Uh, gonna be looking for some aftermarket ones that actually don't spin around and bounce around when you get onto off-road because you kind of need your mirrors. Uh, second, uh, looking probably for more aggressive tires that I can still uh, utilize on pavement but are going to be a little bit better uh, on the off-road terrain and third I'm looking into something maybe on the front sprocket to try to get some a little bit lower end power um, and be able to ride the bike a little slower because it's jumpy I would say anything less than uh, say six miles an hour um, it really gets jumpy and because it's a nice light little nimble bike you really can creep along slow but uh, the way that it's geared right now, really, you gotta be, you probably gotta be hitting the clutch uh, quite a bit to be able to do that. So I think those are really the three things that are right on the top of my mind uh, to upgrade on this bike going forward. So just who do I think that this bike would be good for? Well, to start, probably novice riders. Probably people that are looking for a smaller bike that either don't want to or can't handle a larger machine. And people like me who want to be able to put a bike on the back of a big overland rig or even a smaller van for that matter. It's light enough, nimble enough, and you can get around on it real easy. In summary, I gotta tell you, I really love this 390 Adventure bike. And the three things that I set out to do, I've kinda accomplished. One, it was fairly inexpensive to acquire. Two, 
It's light, it's easy to move about and put on the back of my Overland Expedition rig. And three, it's just super fun to ride, whether I'm pounding it on the dirt where 90% of my travel so far has been, or hitting the grocery store on the pavement and bringing back whatever supplies to camp that I need. So in summary, I gotta give you the two thumbs up on this one. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for another adventure in next week's episode. Thanks for watching this video. If you like what we're doing, be sure to subscribe to our channel by clicking on the truck and tree symbol to your right. Once again, thanks and hope to see you soon.